guys, Wonder Hussy here. I'm back at the Hard Luck Castle for part two of my video where I'm gonna show you guys the inside of the castle this time. I got here last night and we had a really nice dinner. We made tacos and all sat around talking. And then Randy, the guy who owns the castle, was so nice as to let my girlfriend and I sleep in his travel trailer down here again, right down the hill from the castle. But let me tell you something, it is cold here. A cold snap blew in yesterday and it was, I think with the wind chill and everything, it was like five degrees last night. I mean, cold. So I just got up. I'm going to go into the castle and get cleaned up and drink some coffee. And then uh, when I'm more presentable, I'll catch up with you. Okay. A little bit later in the day, I had some time to get presentable. And now I'm back here where I left off in my last video at the front door to the Hard Luck Castle. Now just as a refresher, this castle is made out of concrete and steel, cinder block reinforced with rebar. The doors are all steel. I mean, this thing is definitely built to withstand a zombie apocalypse, okay? I think he used 24,000 cinder blocks to build this thing. It's crazy. But what's really interesting about it is it's super strong and hardcore, but it also has all these really beautiful aesthetic touches, almost like whimsical touches. And the guy who built it is not a whimsical type dude at all. He's, you know, rough and tumble, burly plumber, knows how to build anything. But you'll see what I'm talking about when we go in. There's all these really neat uh, artistic touches. So let's go into the front door and into the foyer and see what it's all about. Okay, here's the door knockers. He says he has the biggest knockers in Esmeralda County, and he is not kidding. Wow, look at this entryway. So cool. I'm just gonna do a 360 so you can see the whole entry. It's a door going off that way into the room where the organ is that you might remember from part one. And there's some other rooms coming off on each side. And the floor is this amazing labyrinth that he all laid by hand, all this tile. And then there's a green gem in the middle of it because it's supposed to be like the yellow brick road. You follow it in and it takes you to the Emerald City. And by the way, if you want to come take a tour of this place, it's open every day from, I don't remember, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It says on the sign out front or on the website, but... He just asked for a $10 donation per head, and you can sign this cool guest book. You can see all the people that have stopped by and taken the tour. Lots of people do it. Okay, let's go in door. Well, over here, this is the formal dining room, okay? He said he wants to get a big round table for this room eventually, but for now, he just has a regular dining table with some really cool tapestries on the wall and some really neat artifacts out. on display, rocks that they found in the area. Look at this, it's this old timey snake bite kit that he found out here, just laying in the desert. Isn't that cool? Yikes. More artifacts. And then he has this really cool mural on the wall. Sorry about the light, readjust. What's interesting about this mural is it's a painting of exactly what is behind this wall, which you can see when you go out the window here. It's just a continuation of the view from the windows. That's the mountains, the valley that this castle's in. Oh, look, you can see in the distance there, there's the trailer that I slept in last night. There's my girlfriend out front. She went to get some, and there's our forerunners park next to it. And then down there, there's a little cabin. That was the original cabin that was here in this valley when he first found this valley. There was a little old hunting cabin here that he used to come stay in on his way when he would travel from, uh, he used to live up in Lake Tahoe and he would travel down to Arizona every year for the Renaissance Fair. And he, halfway through, he'd break up the trip by staying in this little cabin. And that's how he came to fall in love with the valley, found out who owned it and bought the land. And he kept the cabin and fixed that up as like a guest cabin, but built this whole castle on top of it, you know? Look at the view out the window. It's amazing, you can see for miles. Wait till we get to the top though, you'll see a really amazing view there. But yeah, this mural is, was painted by one of his family members, and it's beautiful. It shows the desert in springtime. Great room to have a like Thanksgiving dinner. 
Okay, let's see this door. This is has a tarp over it to keep it warm because it's really cold in here in the winter. Look at this amazing fountain. Now this is like the core of the castle. This is like kind of like circular, central atrium. I don't even know what you would call it with a staircase, spiral staircase going up it. And this beautiful fountain with these three naked ladies. I guess he said originally it was supposed to be somebody's coffee table they commissioned, but the guy's wife didn't like the fact that the lady's nipples were showing, so she refused to let it into her house, and he got it for a steal and made this fountain out of it. It's not running right now, but... Okay, now let's just finish up the first floor before we go up the staircase. And here is... Oh, here's the kitchen. Beautiful, old-timey kitchen. Look at this. By the way, all this tile work he did himself, okay? He laid every one of these tiles. And it's not easy in a round... Building a round house to cut all this tile to fit circular rooms? I mean, come on. But look at that. And it's not like he just laid boring tile, either. It's all, like, trimmed up with little interesting details. Look over here. Look at this. It's like fancy. This guy, that's what I meant when I said the guy is kind of like an artist. And he loves like the 50s vibe too in the kitchen. Like old 50s stove. It's really cool. And everything in this house is run on solar and wind so we can keep an eye on how much power we have. And there's plenty of it because it's always windy and sunny out here. Okay, and look at this bathroom. Talk about amazing tile work. This bathroom is out of control beautiful. I know the light's kind of weird, but it's all this really cool blue tile. And, oh man, it's really backlit. I'm sorry about that. But look how beautiful this glass brick is with these bubbles on it. I mean, look at this shower. How cool is this freaking shower? <laughs> it's amazing. And because he used to be a plumber, he put a urinal in every one of the bathrooms, too. So if you're into using a urinal, you're in luck here. The detail is just so amazing. Even his... Kleenex box pattern matches. Look at that. Okay, now let's go upstairs to the second floor. See what's up here. You can see all the cinder block walls is what what he used to build this thing brick by brick. Just him and some friends. <sighs> oh, look at this cool lamp. I mean, everything in this house is so friggin' interesting. See what's in this room. Oh, it's a guest bedroom. Beautiful guest accommodations. Sorry about the light. So you can see here that uh, there's a French doors that go out to kind of like a little balcony overlooking the valley. And then look at this. Look at the bathroom in this one. Look at this bathtub. How amazing is this? And that view out the window. Holy crick. This another shower, all beautifully tiled. Everything in here was, look at this. Every one of those tiles he laid by hand. I mean, this guy spent so much time on this amazing castle. Okay, now here's one of my favorite things. In this bathroom, there's a water closet, okay, where the toilet is. And look at this. Okay, it's just a water closet, you know, the usual. Oh, it's got a bidet, so it's not that usual, and a urinal. It's like a plumber's dream. But what's really cool is the artwork on the walls. There's two paintings, one on that side, one on that side. I'm going to give you the full reveal. We have a beautiful blonde on this side and a beautiful brunette on this side. <laughs> nice. And then this room here is just another bedroom. I think he said this is going to eventually be the master bedroom. But nothing in here yet except for the TV. And then, sorry about the light, but look, another set of French doors looking out over a balcony. An amazing friggin' view of this beautiful valley. I mean, you can see miles and miles. Okay, that door just goes back out to the central tower. This door here... Oh, wow, like, this is the pipe room for the pipe organ. This is where it's really complicated the way a pipe organ works. It's 
Sorry, it's kind of dark in here, but this is where the actual noise is made when you play the piano downstairs. Air, I mean the organ downstairs, air is forced up here through this ductwork that comes from downstairs, and this is what blasts air through all these pipes. So if you're in this room while someone is playing the piano downstairs, it's ear-splittingly loud. And I think you might actually be getting to getting ready to play the organ down there because he's got it all fired up. So I better get out of here before. I mean, if he hits one of these pipes while I'm in this room, it'll be so loud it'll blow my eardrums out. Okay, let's go back out of the master bedroom and back through this amazing master bathroom. <laughs> oh, by the way, the mosaic on the floor here has a ruby in the middle of it. Look at that. So fancy. Everything in this castle is so fancy. I mean, I guess that's what befits a castle, huh? Well, everything except for that. This bedroom reminds me of like a real castle where like this is where the... This is where the lady and the lord slept. And then this is where the servant slept on a pallet on the floor. <laughs> okay, we gotta go up one more floor to the very top. By the way, look at this amazing chandelier here. This used to be a street light, he said. He got it for free, they were gonna take it to the dump. It was some kind of fancy street light at a shopping center or something. But now it's a chandelier here at the Hardlet Castle. Keep going up. This is my favorite part of the castle up here. You guys are really going to dig this. This is like a glassed-in observation deck. Now, you might remember from my part one that we sat in here when I was here last time and watched a meteor shower because there's no light pollution out here in this valley, right? It's so desolate and so far from any metropolitan areas. That it's the perfect place to sit and stargaze. You can see everything. <laughs> see, there's the trailer where I spent the night. It's my car. This is the, 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 you can see in the distance, the road in. That road in just winds all the way out to, kind of like where that bright white line is, way out there, that dry lake bed. That's the road, the main road. So like the shrine and stuff that I showed in part one, that's all along that road. You can see he's got his flag of flying. He's got that little obelisk behind it with all the presidents named on it. There's one of his windmills generating uh, electricity for the house. Back there is the pass where he goes over to get water. There's a big uh, water tank over the hill that he trucks all his water down from. That's uh, his workshop where he works on his automotive projects and his welding stuff. He has another workshop in the basement here, it's just for carpentry, but that's like where he does all his big projects. And then over there, I don't know if you can see because the sun's kind of bad, but there's another mine in that little valley right up there. That's his only neighbor, and that guy doesn't even live here all the time. So, but this is a great place to stargaze, and right now it's free and freezing cold outside, so it's really nice and toasty in here. It's like being in the top of a lighthouse. In fact, there is a really bright light on the very tippy top that he said is so bright it could light up this whole valley at night. So I'm hoping he turns that on tonight so I can see it. And then look, here's the last block. Started building the castle on April 14th of 2000. Finished it on November 15th of 2010. 24,000 blocks. Isn't that crazy? 10 years. But you can tell, you know, he put a lot of time and effort into this, but it definitely paid off because it is beautiful and everything is so solidly constructed, right? Like It's built on a block of granite, so even if there's an earthquake, which there are occasional earthquakes here, it's not going to move. In fact, even the, well, you probably can't see from here, but even this fountain is connected via these wires, these cable wires. to hold it in place. So if there is an earthquake, that fountain won't tip over. He thought of everything. And speaking of everything, this staircase winds, I guess, counterclockwise up this tower, you can see. And they, they did that for a reason, because apparently in all castles, the staircase goes counterclockwise, because in a siege situation, if your enemy is attacking you, you would run up into the tower to escape, like that was your last hidey hole. And if you're up here, facing down, and your enemy is coming up at you, 
your right hand is free to swing your sword, right? Most people are right-handed, but the guy coming up at you, now say I'm the bad guy coming up the stairs, I can't really swing my sword because it's gonna bang into the wall, right? So the person who is being besieged has the advantage because now they can whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Huh? How about that? I mean, when I say this guy thought of everything when he built this castle, I mean, he thought of everything. Okay, well that was just kind of like a little look-see around the interior of the castle because I promised you that last time. Um, but now we're gonna go into the organ room because I think he's getting ready to demonstrate the organ. And I know I already showed it in my last video, but it's so interesting that uh, I thought I would shoot a little bit more video of that. Okay, we're getting ready to interview Randy. Uh, my friend Adam came with me on this visit and he does uh, radio stuff like podcasts and he's gonna do an interview with Randy um, and ask him all about uh, the history of how he built this castle. And I don't know what he's gonna do with that material but it might come out on a podcast soon so you can listen to that and hear the whole story. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to do an audio interview in the organ room. We're gonna talk to Randy and ask him all his deepest, darkest secrets. We're gonna get him really embarrassed. My, our goal in this interview is to make him blush. I think we can do it. Do you ever blush? What? You ever blush? I don't know what blush is. Okay, our interview with Randy went pretty well. I mean, he talked about everything. It was really interesting. Um, and now we wanna hear him play the organ, which I know I already shot him playing the organ in my last video, but it was really dark in there and you probably couldn't see all the amazing details of this room. So I'm gonna do a quick tour of the room um, while Randy's out firing up the generator and then we're gonna hear some organ music. Okay, so first of all, there's this little mini organ down here that came out of some church in LA, which is cute, but this one's not really hooked up to play. This is the big daddy right here that you might remember from part one. <laughs> this thing is freaking amazing. I would have no idea even how to go about playing this. So, like look at all those foot pedals, three different keyboards, all these different switches. I mean, even the sheet music looks confusing, but it sure does sound beautiful when it's fired up and cranking away. Look, that's the percussion. Like in part one, you heard uh, when they played uh, that Disney song, Whistle While You Work, and all those drums were beating and that cymbal in the corner was crashing. It's all automated. It's really interesting. And then there's uh, chimes and there's a glockenspiel over there. And all these pipes are I guess my understanding is these are more or less decorative. The actual sound is coming from the pipes up in that other room that I showed you. So this is just for show down here. The real stuff goes on behind the scenes. So, uh, so just tell people who are listening what, we're, what you're doing right now. Who do you know? dark and spooky down here but that's because the lights aren't turned on right now and I'm not sure where all the light switches are so I'm just gonna show you the areas that are lit up that right there in front of us was uh, the wine cellar he's got another really fancy bathroom down here with a bidet or not a bidet excuse me just a urinal but a really cool round shower in here I think yeah, this one has like 10 or 12 shower heads really nice And he's got another workshop over there. And then through here, there's something really cool. First of all, he's got like an entire guest kitchen down here. If you wanted to stay over, you could have your whole own kitchen, which is also, of course, beautifully tiled, like everything else in this amazing castle. And not just beautifully tiled, also decorated with funky tile. Okay, and then there's a whole bunch of DVDs and VHS tapes everywhere. And you might be wondering why there's all those VHS tapes and DVDs. Well, that's because there's a movie theater. Well, look at this. It's super dark in here. Let me see if I can find another light. 
I don't know, it's super dark in here, but look, he has this whole movie theater set up with a big screen TV <laughs> in the basement and even like real movie theater seats from an actual movie theater with cup holders. And if the movie is boring and you don't find that to your liking, he also has some slot machines. Sorry, it's so dark down here, you can't really see. He doesn't have them turned on, but there's a couple of slot machines, like Vegas slot machines down here too, so you could, well, you couldn't really gamble because there's no money in them, but you could play around. Anyways, there's so much amazing stuff in this castle that I could probably walk around for 20 hours and show you guys everything here, but uh, I don't want to step on this poor guy's toes more than I already have. I mean, he is very gracious to invite my friends and I over. And this time my girlfriend and I are staying two nights because we want to explore some other stuff in the mountains here. So I don't want to put him out any more than I already am. But it really is an amazing place and I really hope I get to come back here again. Like hopefully in the summertime when it's not so cold. Because I bet it's amazing in the summer. <laughs> All right, we spent a second night at the Hard Luck Castle. It's the first time I've stayed two nights. And we had a really nice time, my friend Adam, my friend Jessica and me all hung out with Randy in the organ room and listened to him play music. We all took turns playing the organ. Well, they all took turns. I'm not very musically inclined. But we had a fire going and Randy has all these really cool old books about ghost towns. So we just, it was kind of like one of those old Victorian drawing room evenings with music and books and a fire and conversation. Just a really nice night, but... My friend Jessica and I are all packed up now and we're getting ready to go exploring some more cool stuff in these mountains up behind the Hard Luck Castle. So we gotta go up there and say goodbye to Randy and thank him for his hospitality. All right, we had a great time staying at the Hard Luck Castle. Randy, thank you so much for having us over. I consider you a good friend. Oh, thank you. And we'll be back again. I enjoy having both of you. you. Come back again. We're going to come back in the summer and ride ATVs when it's not so cold. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be Yay! Great. Have a good time.